Welcome! This is the first in a series of instructional videos that will familiarize you with the features that are available in the Timeline Tools extension for Sony Vegas Pro. Timeline Tools provides editing features that makes manipulation of Vegas events, markers, envelopes, points, plugins, and groups a snap. The program is especially useful for creating video slideshows that contain hundreds of still images. Timeline Tools has been tested and works with both 32 and 64-bit versions of Sony Vegas Pro 8.0 and up. In this video, I'll cover the following topics. Opening a Vegas project, selecting and highlighting events, moving around the grid and timeline, moving events in the timeline, and reversing events in the timeline. Let's start by looking at the Timeline Tools main display. This is what the display looks like when you have not yet saved or opened a Vegas project. Timeline Tools works with open Vegas projects, so I'll open a simple project now. This is a very simple project that contains several still images. The information label just above and to the left of the grid shows that there are 61 items currently displayed in the grid. This small project will be sufficient to demonstrate the features covered in this video. The features I'll be covering here are accessed from the Timeline Tools pop-up context menu. Although many selections can be seen in the menu, this video will be limited to the features that I've mentioned earlier. First, let's define a couple terms, highlighting and selecting. Highlighting is the selection of events displayed in the grid. Currently, we have one highlighted item in the grid. If I move around in the grid, I am highlighting different items in the grid. I can highlight more than one item. Here, I'm simply dragging the mouse with the button, left button down and that has highlighted more than one. Or you can use any of the standard Windows commands such as a control and shift key to select blocks of items in the grid. And th that was shift. Here I'm holding the control key down to add highlighted items to the number of items. Once you are done highlighting all of your desired items, then you can perform operations on those from the context menu. Selecting an event refers to the setting the selection state of an event in the Vegas timeline. Down here we have one selected event and it is reflected up here in the grid showing that that event's selection state is checked. You can select multiple events in the grid by doing things like saying select events to the end in which case all of the events selection states are checked or we can simply have one selected so in the timeline tools context menu the operations that you select in the menu are performed on either selected events or highlighted events. All right, let's discuss moving around in the grid. As you've seen, if I move around in the grid, you can see the image over here changing, and down here you can see the Vegas cursor changing also. These are actions that are settable in the Timeline Tools options where you can have either the Vegas cursor track the selection that you've made in the grid here, or you can have that turned off so that if you move around in the grid it does not change the selection or the displayed item in the uh, Vegas preview window. Also, if you select an item in the timeline, that will change the highlighted item in the grid to follow that selection. Alright, now that we've covered moving around in the grid and 
selecting and highlighting events, let's talk about moving events. When I'm editing a project that has a lot of events, I found that many times I want to group particular types of events together. In Vegas, this has not been an easy task to select events and reposition them on the timeline and maintain the integrity of all of the other uh, events that surround those selected events, either ahead of them or behind them. In Timeline Tools, this is just a simple couple mouse clicks. For example, down here I have a picture of B-24 uh, bomber factory. I have a picture of a P-38 Lightning and here's a picture of a C-47 cargo plane flying over the Egyptian desert. Well, let's say for example that I decided I wanted to move this B-24 picture back behind the C-47 picture and move the P-38 and the C-47 picture up in the in the uh, timeline. This is easy to accomplish. All I have to do is highlight the P-38 and the C-47 pictures, select these highlighted events, then highlight the event where I want to move them, and say move selected events to the highlighted event location. Here we can see now we have the P-38, the C-47, and the B-24 has been swapped and moved behind the other two on the timeline. Also notice that if I play this, the lead-in fade and the overlap crossover fades have been maintained even though they've been repositioned on the on the uh, timeline. Whenever Timeline Tools moves or reverses events in the timeline, it does not make any other changes to anything and it maintains all of the crossfade and fade settings of events that it moves. All right, this is a simple example of moving. Let me undo that. We're back to where we were. In that example, I just moved a couple events on the timeline. What if you want to move lots of events in, from different locations to one location? For example, say I wanted to group pictures of fighter aircraft together in one place. So what I could do is I can start off here in the grid. That's a B-24, and I'll just use the down arrow key to move through here. Now that is a P-38 and that's a fighter. So if I say add highlighted events in the table to the move list or press the tilde key, what this did is it added this event to something called a move list, which we'll show you in a minute. Right now I'm just going to go through the table quickly. I'm pressing the down arrow key and when I see a fighter, there's a fighter, I'm going to press the tilde key. There's once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times. So that's that's sufficient. So what we'll do now is let me go back up to the top. I'll highlight the first event. I'll right click. And now I have a menu item appear that says move seven move list entries to the highlighted event location. If I select this, all of those events that I added to the move list would be moved to the event location highlighted in the grid. But before I do that, let's just take a look at those items that we added. So I'll say edit the move list. So here we have a little dialog box appear. 
and if I click on this event we can see that that's that P38 that looks like E47 Thunderbolt another P38 that's a P51 Mustang that's a P39 Era Cobra more P38s and that's a Navy plane which I don't have any idea about. Here I can see a preview of all of the different events in the timeline that are going to be moved. And even though these events were in different locations, we can see over here, they were all in the first track, but this was event number one, this was event number four, five, seven, ten, twelve, and thirteen. So these came from different locations on the timeline and when they'll be moved they'll all be moved and placed contiguously at the location of this highlight event. So I'll click here I'll say move those move list entries and here we see those seven move list entries. They have now been located down here in the timeline. There we go with the P-38, the Tuskegee Airmen, another P-38, the P-51, the P-39, and so on. So these have all been moved into the location at the highlighted event, and there we go. Here's our B-24 bomber factory picture that was the first picture on the track, but it's now been moved back because all the others have been moved in ahead of it. So as you can see, again, all of the fades, the crossover overlap uh, width and type has been maintained. And what we just did is a seamless move of all of those events. All right, so in addition to moving events, let's undo that. In addition to moving events, we also have the ability to reverse events. Reverse is like moving, except it's taking the events and just swapping the order that they appear. So for example, I have the first three events here in timeline, which is my B-24 factory, my P-38, and my C-47. And the next one is a, uh, this is an anti-aircraft gun proximity fuse. Here we'll select the first four events in the grid by highlighting them then say select all highlighted events so now I have actually selected those in the timeline and then I say reverse the order of selected events so now we have our proximity fuse is in the first location then the C-47 then the P-38 then the B-24 so we've actually reversed the order of these four selected events uh, let me undo that. Now, it, this not only works with adjacent events, it will work with events that are scattered in the timeline. For example, I'll select the B24, or I'll highlight the B24. I'll select this Tuskegee Airmen. I'll select this P-51 and I'll select this P-39 Era Cobra. So we have four selected events, B-24, Tuskegee Airmen, P-51, and P-39. Now, if I say reverse order of selected events, here we have the P-39. We didn't touch anything else in between. 
there we have the P51. Again, these were untouched. Now we have the Tuskegee Airmen, and there's the B-24 down here. So, effectively, these two swap positions and these two swap positions. Now let me undo this here. So there's the Arakoba, B-24, Tuskegee Airmen, and the P-51. All right. So this is an example of reversing events in the timeline. Okay, we'll see you again in another video.